Uh-oh, we got the hood up on the third gen. Welcome back everybody, David Shepard here on the Humble Hotshot channel. Just doing some maintenance today on the Ram. We've been running this truck pretty hard and there are some items that need attention. No real major issues, kind of general maintenance stuff. But I thought some of you guys might be interested in that. You know, we're just in the yard today working on the truck. No hauls at the moment, not gonna be out on the road in this video. But if this is something you guys are interested in seeing, let me know if it's boring to some. And you know, maybe I only need to do one video or once in a while maintenance stuff. But let me know in the comments if it's something you guys like. If it's something you don't, let me know either way and we'll go forward from there. So I'm gonna show you guys what products I like to use, what parts we got going into the truck today and the minor issues that we do have with the truck. I'll explain to you guys as well right after a quick scripture verse. So today I've got Proverbs 13, 20, which says, those who walk with the wise will become wise, but those who walk with fools will reap harm. So Proverbs, like I said in other videos, is King Solomon's writings of just wise, wise sayings for spiritual living. So the story goes that King Solomon um, was a godly man. He's the son of King David and David was, was probably the greatest leader of Israel, but he did fall into sin like all of us do. So King Solomon was his son, and he was a really godly man, really seeking after the Lord. And so the Old Testament records that the Lord said to Solomon, Ask whatever you wish, and I will grant it to you. And Solomon asked for wisdom. And it's, it's an amazing thing to me because the Lord says, Since you asked for wisdom and not for earthly kingdoms and and riches and all those things i'm going to grant you wisdom and i'm also going to bless you with with an earthly kingdom that will far exceed any before you and all those after you so really interesting story and the book of proverbs is those wise sayings from king solomon so if you guys like that stuff i think it's really applicable to just like i said wise living whether you're a christian or not whether you're a believer or not i think they could be applied to everyone's life so maybe we'll do a little um little series of proverbs and continue those or maybe we'll continue to mix it up but let me know what you guys think and now i'm going to show you what we've got going on with the third gen cummins so we've got the hood up because we're going to do an oil change we've got the 12 quarts of rotella t6 synthetic 1540 that is what i like to run the rotella t6 fully synthetic Rotella oil. I run the 1540 in the summertime and I run the 540 in the winter. We do have extreme temperature fluctuation here in Colorado. So um, I know these trucks call for 1540. So there's always a little controversy about using the 540, but I don't see a drop in oil pressure. I don't have leaks up here with the thinner oil or anything like that. So that's what I'm going to continue to do with the knowledge that I have. You know, I'm always willing to learn. And if something else comes up, I will. I will always, uh, always willing to change is all I'm trying to say. So we got the oil and then we've got some Napa gold filters. We've got the air filter here and then the oil filter. I do like the Napa products. I buy a lot of parts from Napa kind of, here's my thinking, kind of for stuff that really matters. I like to go with more quality parts, other things, you know, I'm not really concerned the brand of the part. If it's a wear item, if it's something critical, I like to go with quality parts, and it's just been my experience that as far as over-the-counter parts stores go, Napa has been the best in my experience. So I'll go with the Napa Gold Filters, and then actually I'm going to get you guys underneath here first. Be able to see outer tie rods are pretty much shot on this truck. The boots are all blown out. Grease is kind of getting everywhere, and there is a little bit of play when you have someone move the steering wheel. So you can see both of those are blown out and then also our sway bar end links, mostly just the rubbers tore up, but the top bushing is pretty cracked and I wanted to get some greasable ones anyway. So gonna replace those as well. And unfortunately, this one is an outer tie rod end and this one on this side, you can see is one piece. So we do have to replace the entire drag link, but don't think it's gonna to be too big of a deal. We've got the sleeve connection point down here, and then we're just gonna to have to use a ball joint press to pop them out on the outers. So that's what we've got going on with front end stuff. I've got an alignment appointment for Thursday morning. Today's Tuesday, so 
want to get all these parts dialed in and um oh and then one more thing is the steering stabilizer so you can see that looks pretty worn as well leaking a little bit and i think it is the original so in an effort to tighten up the steering on this a little bit um got those parts again this truck um i know dodges are notorious for having that sloppy steering this solid front axle coil spring setup getting all wore out all the bushings all the wear parts and then you've got a bunch of slop in your steering thankfully this truck is not too bad with that i think um i think a lot of people lift these and put bigger tires on them and start to have problems this truck's never been lifted it's mostly been a highway driver its entire life so um front end's not too bad but i did want to address those parts and get it tightened up and get a fresh alignment on it so with the other ones we did go Moog. I like the Moog suspension parts. Here's that outer tie rod end, and here's that whole dra uh, drag link, excuse me, with the other tie rod end built in. Also, a new steering stabilizer back here. So, kind of the last and final piece is shocks on this truck. They've they've actually been blown out the, the entire time I've had this truck. I mean, some people might trash me for that, but you know what? At the end of the day, shocks are mostly just a ride quality thing you know it's it, it will affect handling you're gonna bounce a little bit more than you would with with good shocks but those have been blown out for a while didn't really didn't really care too much but we are starting to get a little bit of cupping on the tires so I did want to go ahead and replace those you could see I'm pretty sure these red shocks are what came on these trucks originally so 293,000 miles and I believe these are the original shocks all around as far as I could tell I'll show you guys the back ones maybe you could see that the boots uh, all right, let's get down on the gravel here you can see the boots are all scrunched up up there because the shocks are totally collapsed again with the airbags I think that kind of gives you some dampening a little bit there so it hasn't been too too bad but like I said, starting to get some cupping on the front tires, so we did want to address that. Shocks I had to order online, and they are not here yet, so um, we're going to get all the steering components done, get the truck aligned, and then we could sneak the shocks in without messing up the alignment. So um, lastly, I will show you guys the tires. DOT requires a um, minimum of 430 seconds tread depth on the steer tires and 230 seconds on the drive axles so these are just about there they're just about down to the wear bars and we've got um these tires went on at 245,000, so just about 50,000 miles out of these and i've had good luck with these tires they're um they're not what i'm gonna go with again but if you guys are looking for a decent highway towing tire with a little bit of all-terrain features I do actually recommend these house brand Big O tires. Um, you know, a lot of people talk crap. That's kind of just like the budget tire shop we have out here in the West. A lot of people like Discount Tire better. I do think they have better techs for the most part. But I've had really good luck with these Big O tires. Um, I did some research, and they're actually manufactured by Cooper for the Big O stores. And believe it or not, they have one of the highest load ratings for this size tire. These are... 275 70 18 and then load range e of course and you can see max load single 3640 pounds so pretty good load rating i think 3700 pounds is the highest i've seen in this size load range e um you know if you step up to 19.5 and go full commercial you could find them higher than that but not going to do that on this truck we're going to keep the 18 inch wheels i do think that's a good kind of middle point for doing mostly highway towing and then we do get off on some dirt roads around here once in a while as well so you can see for the most part they've worn pretty evenly again we're not quite down to the wear bars but we're pretty much approaching the dot minimum so we do want to get these replaced and it's actually the passenger front that had the most cupping i don't know if you guys will be able to see but if you're not sure what I'm talking about, that's basically just from having worn shocks and the truck bouncing up and down, you could see this lug is all smooth, and then this one has its siping still. This one's all smooth. So every other one 
is wearing more than the others. Also, this tire is worn a bit more on the outside than the inside. This corner is really the only one that's done it. Um, but we're going to get the new shocks and new steering stuff put in, a fresh alignment. And obviously, we want to do all of that before putting new tires in so that we don't cause any bad uneven wear on the new tires. So I'm going to jump into that work. We also got oil change, air filter, kind of regular service. We'll check the transmission, the diffs, hit all our grease points as well. That stuff um, that we do all the time. I run the Rotella T6 for about 10,000 miles um, or whenever it starts to really look black. One thing with that oil, when I switch to synthetic, it seems to stay clean really long. Even in a diesel truck, it'll look golden for five to 7,000 miles and then it starts to look black, thin out at all. That's when I go ahead and change it. But for highway towing, it's been about 10,000 miles. Obviously, you know, we got to put a lot of work into these trucks since we're working them out on the road. So I do want to get as much as I can out of each service interval, but also not push it too far and have any problems. So I'm going to get to work on this stuff, try to get all these parts installed before it gets too, too hot out here. And um, if I run into anything interesting along the way, I'll uh, shoot some footage for you guys. And then uh, maybe I'll jump ahead and show you guys the parts installed and let you know how it went. So catch up with you soon. All right, guys, we're torn into the driver's side here. We do, um, we're attacking the outer tie rod here. So we do have the top nut pretty much loose, it's about to come off. And then we also loosened this um, crush sleeve, I guess is what you would call it. Basically locks this outer tie rod from moving. Some of them have a big jam nut here and others use this, uh, I guess, crush sleeve is what I'll call it. Basically just pinches down on the tie rod thread so that that can't go anywhere. And if you're a mechanic or even a backyard mechanic like myself, you'll know this stuff, but thought it a good opportunity to go over just a couple basics um, that might help some of you guys out if you're working on your own stuff. So first things first, we do have the truck jacked up by a frame point, basically the end of the control arm there, but then always, always, always use a jack stand or some kind of safety. This one's under the axle because we, we kind of want this axle in the neutral position. So not fully drooped and not fully compressed either. It's just gonna keep the least amount of force on that tie rod when we're trying to pop the ball joint loose. So always, always, always use some kind of safety. Don't rely on a hydraulic jack to hold it. So whether it's a good jack stand like this or some blocks of wood, throw your tire underneath, something so that if that jack fails or slips or anything happens to that, this truck's not gonna land on you and hurt you. So number one, always have a safety underneath there. And then there's lots of different ways to do this when you're dealing with tie rods or any suspension components that are gonna cause you to lose alignment. So one way of doing it is to keep the truck on the ground, front tires on the ground and lock the steering wheel so that when you take those steering components apart, the tires aren't gonna move or at least move too much. So you kind of maintain your alignment and then you could do a tape measure adjustment at the end to get it dialed in. Unfortunately, we couldn't really access this too well with the tire and wheel on. So we did decide to remove it. And again, there's many different ways to do this, but, um, and like I said, we are getting an alignment right afterwards, which is always ideal. But what I'm gonna do is just get a rough measurement of how many threads are exposed, which is right at three quarters of an inch. And then more precise, I will count the number of threads as I take that tie rod out. So that'll just allow you to know, you know, the alignment isn't perfect on this truck now, but at least it'll be back to where it was and able to drive to the alignment shop without major issues. So counting those threads will get you close and, um, you know, keep you from having your tires pointed crazy opposite directions. So we're gonna, press that one out and jump to the other side. I'll catch back up with you soon. All right, so we backed off the top nut enough to get the ball joint to break loose. You can see the gap in there. It broke loose from the steering knuckle, which a lot of times that is the major struggle. Sometimes you gotta use a ball joint press to actually pop that tapered part of the ball joint out of the steering knuckle. This one, as soon as we use the impact and backed that nut off just a little bit, that did break free. So first challenge averted, but then once you basically lose pressure against the steering knuckle there, this, 
this whole ball joint will spin freely. It does have, I don't want to take this all off, it's kind of on there. Um, it does have a hex head head on the end of the stud that you could hold back on. So you could see that's what this breaker bar against the frame is doing. And then that was a struggle to get that nut to break free just from, from being stuck on the stud. So a little bit of WD-40, and then we did actually use a little bit of heat, not oxyacetylene or anything, just a little propane plumber's torch heating up the nut because basically the heat's going to make things expand, right? So you want to heat the nut, try to get that to expand a little bit off of the threads. So again, this might not be the absolute best way of doing things. I'm not, you know, your SAE certified mechanic, but I do try to do all my own maintenance. And like I said, this is backyard mechanic stuff. So take it for what it is, but heated up that nut a little bit and got our wrench here. And then if you guys don't know this trick, you could always slip one wrench over the other and use that to increase your leverage. Breaker bars holding against the frame and you can see that nut turning and that is how we got that one to break loose. So a couple tips, again, you know, you could potentially damage your wrenches doing this. This is not the absolute perfect way to do things, but as a budget backyard mechanic guy, these are some of the tricks I use and I hope they help you as well. All right. Okay, as you can see, we've got this ball joint outer tie rod popped out of the steering knuckle on this side. Next challenge is getting these threads out of the drag link. So, coming over to this side, since we're changing the steering stabilizer anyway, we went ahead and removed the one side of that. You can see another, you can get a good look at the taper of how those are pressed in there. This one came out fairly easily. This end, not so much. So, you don't want to beat on the end of these threads. That's typically not going to force it out anyway, and you risk damaging that. So, if you guys haven't seen a ball joint press, basically this slips behind there, and then you thread this down against the end of your stud, bolt, whatever you want to call it, and force that out. You can put your impact, this one already broke loose, you can put your impact or just a socket, or actually just a ratchet in the end of that, and like I said, force it out that way. So this one's uh, just a cheap front end service kit. You can see it comes with different sizes, different styles. Yeah, just some Pittsburgh tools, but works great. You know, don't have to use those too often. So again, stuff that doesn't have to be super good quality. I don't spend the money for that. Um, you could also rent those ball joint presses, but always a better way of doing it than just by force, bigger hammer, and um, or even those pickle forks that jam in between. You always end up tearing up the boots and even if you're replacing parts, you're going to struggle a lot more with a pickle fork than with one of these just ball joint press tools. So there's another tip for you guys. Hope that helps. And uh, we'll get into the passenger side here soon. Okay, so about five trips to the parts store later, and we're back with you. Um, where'd we leave off? So I got the inner tie rod off. You guys know we were replacing these outer tie rods. And then since we're also replacing the steering stabilizer, which bolts here, we were just one nut away from removing the entire inner tie rod. This is driver's side inner. And once we removed it, realized the ball joint in this end is pretty, uh, pretty worn out as well. We thought it was just the outers, but this inner one gets you a better look there. Yeah. She's all tore up, really notchy steering in there. So, unfortunately, this one is pressed in permanently, no clip, no way of pressing that out. So, that's a problem with a lot of modern parts. They're not very serviceable. It's more of a, we just live in a throw away and get new type of society, I guess. So, that's unfortunate. You got to replace the entire tie rod just for a bad ball joint. But, not a big deal. Went to Napa and picked this up. So nice new tight ball joint in that end. And then we also went ahead and got the new crush sleeve um, tie rod adjusting sleeve, I believe is what it's actually called. Um, just gonna save us time. That's a cheap part. And it's gonna save us time. We had this soaking while we were gone, but um, yeah, it'll save us time dealing with that cheap part. And then everything will be new in pretty much the whole steering linkage system. So that's good news. New steering stabilizers here as well we've got the outer tie rod end 
which of course is the entire drag link on this side. And then the only one we won't be replacing, if you could see, is the ball joint on the pitman arm off of the steering box. That one looks like it's in really good shape. It's up high out of the dirt and grime and all that. So from the pitman arm all the way to the outer tie rods will be all new steering joints, which is great. But I'm about $500 in parts on this doing the work myself. Now, obviously I'm not replacing everything in the front end, but quite a bit of the wear components, everything that looks like it needs replaced to me. And then we're gonna get an alignment, but really not too bad considering I know folks that have put thousands of dollars into a Dodge front end. I mean, if you take it to a shop, have them go through everything, you're two to $3,000 depending on the parts you go with and where you're at with the labor. So replacing the entire inner tie rod with this new unit from Napa and we'll pick back up after that. All right, guys, we're back. It's about a thousand degrees out, but we're making headway, praise God. All of the teardown is done. You can see old parts here, and we are starting to go back together with the new parts. So praise God for that. Kind of the hard work of tearing apart this old stuff, breaking ball joint connections, and just, you know, the rusty, crusty nature of old parts is done. And we're moving forward, kind of made the turning point to where we're putting new parts back on. So I'll show you guys the outer tie rods, as I suspected, were very much in need of repair. This one kind of tight and notchy, really bad. And this one, the passenger side just totally slopped out. Nothing left in there. Um, steering stabilizer is off. And then kind of the same thing with these sway bar end links. You know, those aren't a big deal. That's kind of just a handling piece, but I'm trying to eliminate all the slop in this front end. And that was definitely part of it. So I'll show you guys back on the truck here. Got the new sway bar in links on. That's sort of the first piece. I try to work basically tear down in one direction and then work from that point uh, forward putting the new parts on. But basically just, I don't wanna get in the way of myself. It's kind of my thinking with this stuff. So do the sway bar in links first. That kind of is in the way of this drag link. And you can see we've got the new steering stabilizer bolted on on the axle side and then the other end will go on our new drag link here so that's that um the sway bar end links and the steering stabilizer are both just kind of a unbolt the old bolt on the new so not too much to show you guys there but we'll give you a peek at the new drag link going in so again we counted the threads out of this uh crush sleeve adjustment sleeve so it was 32 turns in. We also took a measurement of the thread, so we're about halfway there. And my forearms were getting tired, so I thought I'd take a minute, catch up with you guys on the footage and show you where we're at. So I'm gonna keep cranking that in, and then we'll move forward. We'll get the outer tie rod on that side, and then we'll move forward with the inner and outer tie rod on the driver's side. So we'll catch back up in a second here. All right, the pile of new parts has dwindled down. Still need to do the oil change and air filter, but that's the easy stuff. But we have pretty much got the front end complete. I'll give you guys a look under there and skipped ahead a little bit, but basically just reverse order from the way I tore things down. I think I went over anything that's kind of key, uh, key points to mention. So otherwise it's just reinstall the new parts. You can see steering stabilizer, the whole new drag link is that black piece with the new crush sleeve outer tie rod as well sway bar links you guys saw and then oh, sliding around on the creeper here but got the other tie rod that gray piece all in as well all the way up to the pitman arm so pretty much all the all the wear items at least that were worn on this truck like i showed you guys before these outer tie rods were the worst of it and then we found some more stuff as we got into it but pretty much all the worn parts are replaced i cycled the wheel a couple times lock to lock on the steering wheel feels really good feels nice and tight and got our castle nuts and cotter pins locked down 
This was kind of interesting. That's the grease fitting, the Zerk fitting that came with that. And it does get really close to the sway bar end link mount, but it doesn't actually hit when you turn in every direction. So we'll have to check that as we go up and down with the steering as well. But praise God, got that all together. It was a hot one, several trips to the parts store as usual with this stuff. So a little bit of a struggle getting the old stuff apart, but praise God we were able to do that. And I think I mentioned this before, but I'm about $500 in parts into this front end rebuild. And of course that's not everything. Um, you know, you've got ball joints on your uh, steering knuckle here, upper and lower, those felt tight. If you put a pry bar in there, those felt tight. And there's also, um, bushings in the track bar that's the track bar that upper piece that we did not replace those can get worn out as well but again they did not seem to be on this truck Ooh, i want to rotate that a little bit so pretty much just have to uh do a touch up a couple touch up things and put the tires and wheels back on but these dodge front ends are known for getting loose and sloppy and like i said before people have spent thousands of dollars to repair these so hopefully this helps some of you guys um if you'd rather just take it to a shop and have everything done, I totally understand that. And, you know, most shops will tell you, say, say the truck comes in with a complaint of loose steering, sloppy steering, need an alignment, however it's described to them. It's really hard to guarantee that it's going to be perfect without replacing everything. So, yes, some shops are just out to get money from you, but at the same time, if they want to have a happy customer and don't want a call back, I completely understand the desire to just start with every bushing every ball joint everything brand new fresh get it aligned and go from there but of course if you're not able to do the labor yourself that could be very very expensive so hopefully this just helps you guys save some money um, basically the way i do it to check to see what's actually worn and replace only those worn parts is you could have somebody wiggle the steering wheel back and forth and you look underneath the truck to see where there's play to see where two parts joined together and are moving, whether it's those tie rods, ball joints, bushings, and then um, certain parts you could get under there with a pry bar and move around yourself and just look for that play. So anywhere you see play, worn boots, stuff like that, that's the stuff I like to go ahead and replace. Things that still seem tight and don't seem to be worn out too bad, I leave them totally alone. So that's my tips for you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this stuff. Let me know in the comments, like I said at the beginning, if you guys want to see more of the maintenance stuff. You know, I'm not going to show you guys putting the tires and wheels back on. Y'all should know how to do that. I don't think I'm going to film the oil change. I kind of showed you guys the products I like to use, but I'm not going to film the oil change. That's all easy stuff. So this kind of wraps up our front end maintenance on the 2003 Dodge Ram Cummins. Hope it helps some of you guys, and I hope that you will read the book of Proverbs and just... Um, you know, seek wisdom. It says so many times in that book to seek wisdom. It's easy to go through life and just stick with what you know and kind of just seek uh, foolishness and relaxation and stuff in your own time. But I start every morning reading the Word of God. It's been a great, I mean, it's unexplainable how much it has helped my life. So I encourage you guys to do that. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell so you get notified of new videos. And I'll see you guys on the next one. God bless you.